from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Sorry, Barry Fitzgerald and William Lundigan in Going My Way. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest producer, Mr. Terry Wilson. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Irving Cummings will be back with you very soon. Meanwhile, I'm very happy to serve as your producer while he takes a much-needed rest. You know, Irving and Leo McCary have been devoted friends for over 30 years. So he was more than pleased when Leo won two Academy Awards for Going My Way. The coveted awards for producing and directing. And as tonight's stars in this enchanting comedy drama from Paramount Pictures, we have handsome, talented William Lundigan... And our beloved Barry Fitzgerald is back by popular demand to recreate his Academy Award winning role. Now, Act One of Going My Way, starring Barry Fitzgerald as Father Fitzgibbon and William Lundigan as Father O'Malley. On a shabby side street in New York's east side is the struggling little church of St. Dominic. In the rectory, Father Fitzgibbon stares in astonishment at a young man who has just made a very startling announcement. Young man, would you, would you mind repeating what you just said? Oh, of course. I'm Father O'Malley, your new assistant. Oh, uh, by the way, I hope you'll excuse my appearance, Father. I was, I was soaking wet. It's not possible. No, no, that, there's been some mistake. The bishop may have a grudge against me, but he wouldn't do a thing like this. <laughs> You man, may you inquire as to the nature of those garments? Well, it's a, it's a, a sweatshirt, Father, and a little pair of gym pants. Huh. And that's the official garb of a priest where you come from. <laughs> no, I'm sure it isn't, Father, but I... Well, I had a little trouble on my way over here. Oh, did you know? Mm, some kids were playing ball out there on the street, and I, uh... Well, I went after a fly ball. Only it got away from me. So you've been playing ball out in the street? Well, uh, the ball broke a store window, and the proprietor just happened to be hosing down his sidewalk, and... I got a little damp before I convinced him I'd pay for the window. Young man, as a matter of curiosity, what made you become a priest? Well, that's that's a long story, Father. You see, I was... Hello? Yes, yes. Who? Chuck. Chuck who? Father Chuck. Oh, oh, that's me. Excuse me. Hello? Timmy! Timmy, how are you? No, 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 I just got in. <laughs> what do you know? It's it's Father O'Dowd, an old friend of mine. Uh, well, it's a little early to say. I think it'd be better if I waited until I saw you, Tim. Uh, make it soon, huh? Right. Thanks for calling. Ah, uh, he's a great little man, Father. Is he? Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, I suppose you want me to show you the church. Well, I'd certainly like to see it. All right, come on, come on. Oh, I like this, Father. It's a beautiful garden. Thank you. How long have you been here? Forty-six years in October. Forty-six years, huh? The church? The same. I built it. Well, I can only hope that someday I can say I built as much. Listen, do you hear the birds? Mm-hmm. They're always here playing in the fountain. Ah, yes, I find this a very pleasant place in which to meditate. You do meditate. Yes, uh, yes, Father, frequently. Well, well if, you, if you come down this path, there's an entrance to the church over... But... Uh, careful, careful, Father. Oh, you're not hurt, are you? Here, let me let me help you. Well, there's only one thing I'd like to know. Who's the idiot who left this stuff across my path? Well, look, will you, will you look at it now. Two suitcases, a tennis racket, and a, and a, a bag of golf sticks. Uh-huh. I'm afraid they're mine, Father. You see, when I yes, got here... Where, you... where may I ask you is your fishing pole? Oh, that's over there. I put it against the tree so that... Rather, Molly, would you like to see the church? Oh, yes, Father. Well, then, I suppose it still have the use of me lower limbs. Let's be doing it. And here he is, Father Fitzgibbon. This is Timmy, my old friend, Father O'Dowd. Good morning. How are you? How are you, Father Fitzgibbon? Uh, Chuck and I here have been friends since we were in Ehi to Nivlik. I haven't seen you since the war. Well, I suppose you've a lot to talk over, then I'll, I'll let you alone. Well, frankly, Father, I just dropped by to see your Father O'Malley here to play a little golf this afternoon. Oh, you did, huh? Where's your parish? St. Francis. Well, no, I can't answer for St. Francis. But here we have very little time for games of golf and such like. And if you were working for me, you wouldn't have the time for it either. <laughs> Lucky for me, then, that I'm at St. Francis's, huh? Yes. 
Yeah, well, let's hope St. Francis can say the same. <laughs> He's got you there, Tim. That's good, Father. Very good. Say, Father, why don't you come out with us sometime? It's a great game. Yeah, we'll teach you how to play. A lot of nice fresh air on a golf course. Yes, and profanity, too. A golf course is nothing but a, a pool room moved into doors. <laughs> You mind if I use that one sometime, Father? <laughs> Young man, you would... Uh, well, t- Tell me, how did he become a priest? <laughs> That's a good question, Father. Excuse me. For you, Father Fitzgibbon. Telephone. Thank you, Mrs. Carmody. I'm coming. What a wonderful old man. Oh, uh, does he know you're in charge here? How do you know I am? Well, I just gathered as much when I heard you were here. Everybody knows St. Dominic's is in a bad way. Do you realize there's a mortgage on this property that they're threatening to foreclose, turn this church oh, into a parking lot? Yes, yes, I've heard all about it, Tim. Somehow I've got to raise a lot of money. I'm glad I didn't get this assignment. Tim, about my being in charge here, keep it to yourself. Huh? Oh, sure, sure. When I talked with the bishop, we agreed that I was to try to straighten things out without, without hurting his feelings. Oh, I see. You're in charge, but you're not. Yeah. But the bishop couldn't very well put him out to pasture, now could he? Well, but meanwhile, we'll, we'll just have to... Uh, pasture... Here, what? What's that you said? About pasture, huh? Uh, uh, I, I was just saying that the next time I come past your church, I'm going to drop in and see again. <laughs> uh, uh, past your church. Uh, good day, Father. So long, Chuck. I'll walk out with you. You coming, Father? No, thank you, but I'll be in the garden. I have a terrible, fierce need for meditation. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, the creatures that walk out of a seminary these days. Yes, Mr. Carmody, what about this, son? Who's that? Who's there? Well, it ain't Mrs. Carmody, Fauna. Hiya, Fauna. Ah, <laughs> good afternoon, boys. I mistook the feathered beast for me housey. <laughs> they kind of look alike, oh, Fauna? Well, no, 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 boys. Well, that's a fine fat bird you have there. Well, uh, we was uh, sort of bringing it over to you, Father. Uh, it's sort of a present, ain't it, Hyman? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but no, that, 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 that's very generous of you. Such a fine bird and all. And where may I ask did you get it? Um, well, you see, Father, we was going we down in a raffle, Father, or over at the uh, theater. Oh, we was lucky. Well, no, there's nothing I'm more partial to than a nice tom turkey. Most did you know, with, with dressing. Mm-hmm. Well, I do appreciate your kindness, boys. Huh? Oh, oh, it ain't nothing, Father. Bless you both, boys. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we'll bring it into the housekeeper, Father. Yeah, Father. We'll see you around. Ah, uh, nice boys, nice boys. Roast turkey. Mmm. <laughs> Oh, this is delicious, Father. Do you, uh, do you serve turkey here very often? No, this was a gift. Have some more, Father. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm especially fond of the drumsticks myself. Oh, oh. <laughs> Tell me, Father, do you know a youngster named Tony Scalpone? Uh, sure I know him. As fine a lad as there is in the parish. The police don't think so. Oh, they don't, huh? No, and if something isn't done about Tony and his pals, I'm afraid they're going to wind up in reform school. Ah, you've been listening to Officer Patrick McCarty, no doubt. <laughs> that fellow hasn't been to Mass in ten years. Well, I still think he may be right about those kids, Father. They're terrorizing the whole neighborhood. I'll have you know that the food before us here was brought to me by two of the very lads the police are so maliciously slandering. Is that so? Yeah, Tony was one of them. I gave them both his blessing. Oh, you gave them the blessing and they gave you the bird, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Huh? It's for you, Father O'Malley. Officer McCarthy at the front door to see you. Oh, excuse me, Father. I'll be right back. Hello, McCarthy. Oh, good evening, Father. Well, I brought some. Hi, fellas. I, uh, I don't think you'll have to wait, McCarthy. Yeah, they're all yours, Father. Aren't you two boys playing ball when that, uh, window was broken yesterday? Us, Father? Uh-huh. Oh, no. And you, uh, you like baseball, don't you? Yeah, sure. We like it. You know, I was just thinking... Saturday, the Yanks are playing the St. Louis Browns. Would you like to go with me? What's the angle, Father? There's no angle. St. Louis just happens to be my hometown, so I can get all the passes I want. What do you say? Well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, sure, Father. I guess the gang would like that. It's a date, then, huh? See that you're all here at noon on Saturday. Okay, Father, that'll be good. Fine. Now, go on home and have your dinner. I'll go and finish my, uh, turkey. Turkey? Yeah, a nice hot turkey. 
That's what I thought you said. See you on Saturday, Twada. Uh, now, let me see. Now, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, I was going to ask you something, Father O'Malley. What made me become a priest? No, 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 no. No, I was about young Tony. Uh, what was it the police were accusing him of this time? Stealing uh, turkeys. It seems they raided a poultry market. And, uh, and did the poor man get back his turkey? All but one. All but <laughs> one. Anything wrong with that drumstick, Father? <clears throat> no, no, I, I thank you to pass me a crust of bread. <laughs> so I'm here again, Father O'Malley, asking for help again. It's uh, this young lady. Oh, now, don't tell me you're in trouble. Well, he thinks I am. I just found her on the beat, Father. Run away from home. Not a cent. Oh, she's a tough one. I, uh, I thought maybe if you'd talk to her, I... Thanks, McCarthy. Well, do you want to talk to me? Why not? Yeah, I'll be going, then. Thanks for your trouble. Well, it says her name is Carol James. Well, Carol? Well, I guess it's just about like the officer said. No. why don't you go back home? I can't stand it back there, Father. My parents and I, well, we just can't agree on anything. My eyebrows, too much lipstick. My dress is too something or other. My nails are too long and my hair. <laughs> well, do you think it's too red? Well, now, I, I really don't know. They even object to my boyfriend's. If they do let me go out, they say, where are you going? Come home early. Come home right after the show. No drive-in. Right. No matter how early I get in, it's too late. And if I say we ran out of gas, they say I'm lying. Are you? Sometimes. Of course, you know, there just may be two sides to this, Carol. Maybe you're being a little unreasonable. I'm 18. 18? As old as then. You know, when I was 18, I thought my father was pretty dumb. But when I reached 21, I was amazed to find out how much he'd learned in three years. <laughs> what do you propose to do? I'm going to get a job. I'm a singer. A singer? Oh, any good? Well, of course I'm good. Would you sing something for me? Maybe I can help you. I'm supposed to be a pretty good judge, you know. Oh, you wouldn't know the kind of songs I know. Oh, now, don't be too sure about that. I used to play a pretty hot piano. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> Would you like to sing? Well, can you play? Yeah, would you, uh -oh. would you mind telling me what's going on in the car? <laughs> well, good morning, Father. This young lady came to us for some help. She's looking for a job. Oh, so it's worth it, one. Well, yes, Father. Mm-hmm. Well, I think maybe I can help you. Now, what would you think of a little general housework? Oh, well, I'm not looking for that kind of work. She's a singer, Father. Well, no. Hold on. Why may I ask you expecting to find employment? In some nice, cool, airy nightclub, I suppose. You go right back to your parents. A fine little girl like you singing in one of those... You've got to start someplace, Father. Being a good wife and mother is good enough start for you like your own mother. Well, goodbye, Father. Goodbye, Carol. Goodbye. Go, go home now. Go home and stay home till the right man comes along. The right man will never come near our house. Don't worry. I'll get by. Carol, Carol, wait there a second. Father, do you think you could let me have... Ten dollars. Huh? She's all alone. She hasn't a thing. Oh. How about five? <laughs> no, Father. Ten. Oh, dear. Thank you. Here, uh, maybe this will help to tide you over. Oh, oh but I... No, 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 no. It's not charity. Just a loan. Thanks. Girl, I can't use it. I, uh, I guess there's a lot of things I should have said to you. You know, advice... But you wouldn't have paid any attention. After all, you are 18, aren't you? I told you not to worry. I'll do fine. All right. Let's hear from you, huh? Thanks again, Father. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, would somebody start telling me what we're doing here? Father O'Malley says bring you bums to the basement of the church. Any complaints, Hyman? Yeah. First thing you know, be making a pitch to turn us into all the boys. Oh, now, look. O'Malley's a right guy, see? He didn't rat on us about the turkeys, did he? So what? He took us to a baseball game, didn't he? Bought us hot dogs, didn't he? And he's going to take us to a picture show, ain't he? How do we know? Yeah. Hyman, you're giving me trouble. I don't like trouble, Hyman. So shut up, bro. Yeah, boys. Oh, hello, Fada. Hello. Say hello to the Fada. <laughs> hello, Fada. <laughs> I guess you fellas are wondering why I asked you down here, huh? Hey, uh, Father, can I, uh, talk to you for a minute? Yeah, sure, Tony. What's on your mind? Uh, alone. Over by the corner. 
Pardon me, boys. Well, I brung them, father. Only, uh, they figured that you being a guy with a round collar, you was gonna slip into the old routine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Now, personally, I'm for giving you a break. Let's swallow you, Tony. Oh, it ain't nothing, father. Only, uh, I'm on the hook for you, see? I'm, uh, yeah. kind of responsible for you, get me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't let you down, Tony. Well, maybe you won't, but you step out of line just once and me and a gang will drop you like you was a hot potato. Okay? Yeah, okay. May I, uh, may I talk to him now? Oh, sure, Father. Go ahead, talk to him. Well, uh, boys, like Tony says, I'm gonna lay it on the line. I asked you down here to do me a favor. St. Dominic's needs a choir, and I want you to start one. Oh, yeah. All right, I, I, I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. But it's not gonna be that way at all. It's gonna be fun. You're gonna like it. But if you think I'm trying to slip over a fast one, well, like Tony says, you can drop me like a hot potato. What do you say? You, uh, going to give me a break? Well, Father, that depends. How many of you here know uh, three blind mice? <laughs> Just two of you? He says three blind mice. <laughs> That's better. Oh. <laughs> Much better. All except one. What's the matter with him? Herman. Hey, Herman. I'm getting out of here. He's, a, he's got a good bass voice, Father. You want him? Sure, certainly. You got him, Father. Hey, Herman, wait a minute. Three blind mice. I won't be found dead singing three blind mice. I mean, the father wants to see you. The father. Oh, I want to see the father. Not so loud. You know I mean? I don't want to see the father. Will you keep quiet? Will you please? Will you keep slapping my head back and forth? You make me dopey. You are dopey. But the father wants a bass singer. I ain't no bass singer. I mean, as of right now, you are a bass singer. Why am I a bass singer? My head, my head. He wants a bass singer. I don't know why he wants a bass singer. Will you go down, please? Will you go down? Now, keep quiet. Let's go, okay? Okay. Thank you, Herman. I got him, Father. Herman wants to sing real bad. Now, I'm a very tolerant man, Mrs. Carmody, but there are some things that get under my skin, and three blind mice is one of them. But he's young, Father Fitzgibbon. Now, what am I? What should he be younger to do with that catawallon? But he means well, and after all, Father, it was the bishop himself who sent him here. Yes, and the bishop himself would put him some other place. My mind's made up, Mrs. Carmody. I'm going to ask to have Father O'Malley transferred. I see. Now, don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll just tell the bishop that we don't see eye to eye, and I'd be happier if he were sent some other place. It's a long, hard road you've come, Father. Surely you can take things a mite easier now. Enjoy your life. And Father O'Malley's just the sort of man for... You see? See what I mean? <laughs> Good day, Mr. Carmody. I'm off to see the bishop. <laughs> And now, our guest producer, Mr. Kerry Wilson. Act two of Going My Way, and William Lundig and his father, O'Malley, with Stanley Clements as Tony. Father Fitzgibbon had just returned from his visit to the bishop, and now in the rectory, has sent for his new assistant. Sit down, Father O'Malley. Well, I've just been to see the bishop. The bishop? The purpose in seeing him was to have you transferred. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry you don't like me, Father. I don't dislike anyone. It's just that I disagree with you. May I, uh, may I ask what the bishop said? Oh, he didn't have to tell me anything. I could read it in a good man's eyes. And rather than embarrass him, I told him that I'd come, that I'd come to see him because I wanted to, well, to put you... He charged his income. Oh, Father yeah, look, uh, don't, don't interrupt me like that. The bishop congratulated me on the ability to see things so clearly at my age and to face the inevitable. You may say something now. Well, here, here, take me to the desk. You're in charge now. Now, you just stay where you are. I couldn't possibly take over here. And destroy the faith the bishop had well, on. For one thing, I'm just starting with the choir of those boys. Three <laughs> blind mice. Oh, that was just to loosen them up, Father. You should hear him tackle Silent Night. Is there anything you'd like me to do? I mean, now. 
No. Well, no, of course not. All right, well, then, if you don't mind, I'll lie down a bit before dinner. Father, Father Melly, when you and the bishop had your little talk, it was more or less along those lines, wasn't it? Putting you in charge. Yes. Thank you. Father O'Malley, I, I just went up there to wake him up and he's gone. He's practiced things, everything. He's gone. But where would he go, Mrs. Carmody? Oh, I can't imagine. And in this rain, too. And he looked so poorly when he came back this afternoon from the bishop. Now, you stay here. I'll go out and look for him. We've got to find him, Mrs. Carmody. I'm sorry, Father O'Malley. There's no news yet. I just now checked with the precinct. What time is it, McCarthy? It's close to midnight. No. Take it easy, Father. Go back to the rectory. No sense in the tool was getting gone. Well, you call me in the ministry here or anything. I don't care what time it is. Just call me. And now that I've found you, Father, and brought you back to your door, I'll say what's on my mind. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And you were always an ugly little man, McCarthy. <laughs> well... Open the door. If you don't mind, I'll go in by myself. There's no reward, you know. <laughs> I'm not so sure I can trust now, you. Now, I'd rather explain to Father Malley in the own way without you around. Well, just tell him you've been a bad boy and you ran away from home and you're sorry. Father Fitzgibbon, all oh, praise heaven. Good morning. Hello. If you don't mind, I've come back. But only temporarily. Until me plans are more formulated. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be no bother to you, Father O'Malley. I'll, I'll just... Uh... Come on. Let's get you out of those wet clothes and get you up to bed, huh? No, no, I, I don't expect me old room, you know. That's yours now. No, I'll, I'll, I'll sleep on the cot or in the cellar. Will you like. please go up to your room? I won't even be bothering you for me food, sir. Sure. I'll, I'll eat out. We'll talk about it later. I'll bring you a nice tray, Father, as soon as you're in bed. No, 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 I'm not a bit hungry. Roast beef and Yorkshire pudding? Hush, uh, hush, hush. <laughs> With creamed onions, fresh asparagus, and a nice hot cup of coffee? Well, well, if you insist. Just, just, a, just a small portion of the, uh, of the, of everything. <laughs> Feel any better? Oh, fine, fine, fine. I'll get up now and take my dishes down to Mrs. Carmody. You'll Carmen. stay right there in bed. You're still cold, aren't you? You, uh, you wouldn't have a wee drop around, would you? Whiskey? Well, I'm a little chilled myself. I went out tonight for the... for uh, a newspaper. Ah, oh, well, in that case, just... just uh, here, look behind you. There in that bookcase. You'll find it on the second shelf behind the life and times of General Grant. <laughs> well, there's a box here, but there's... The box? Oh, open the box. So this is where you keep it. In the music box. Oh, real Irish whiskey, huh? Ever since I left Ireland, my old mother sends me a bottle every Christmas. So you see, with a degree of abstinence, it becomes me calendar. I get a little behind during Lent, but it comes out even by Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that's me mother's picture on the wall. She's very beautiful, Father. Of course, that was taken some time ago. She's 90 years old. You know, I always planned that as soon as I got a few dollars ahead, I'd go back to the old country and see me mother again. Now, would you believe that that was 45 years ago? To your mother. I hope you'll be seeing her real soon. Thank you. doorbell, then I'll ring mine. Well, thank you, but it seems we're both about to ring the same bell. We are? Carol James, apartment 3B. You a friend of Carol's? Me? Well, I'm her worst enemy, Father. She's she's not in trouble, is she? Isn't she? 
Just wait till I get up there. Look, uh, I'm Father O'Malley from St. Dominic. Well, how do you do? I'm Ted Haynes from the Knickerbocker Savings and Loan. You're Mr. Haynes? Well, I'm the little rat. My father's the big, important rat. Oh. Uh, we own that mortgage on the church, Father, and unless you people can come across with some cash... Oh, no, no. You look such like a reasonable young man. Oh, I'm very to... reasonable. Now, take Carol James, for example. Miss James, whoever she is, refuses to pay her rent. And I'm very reasonably going to toss her out. But suppose she has no other place to go. Now, look. Give her a month to start making good, and, well, St. Dominic's will guarantee the rent. St. Dominic's? Oh, now, Father, please. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. I see your plan. Do one thing for me, though, will you? Ask her to stop by the church? I'll be glad to, Father. Oh, and don't think too badly of me. After all, if there weren't heels in the world, you'd be out of a job. <laughs> That's where we stand. Well, O'Malley, unless we can raise a terrible lot of money. Oh, I suppose I can always go to the bishop. Admit me a great failure. Failure? And... Well, a good preacher could raise the money. And I'm not very nimble in the pulpit. My mouth is full of clover. Well, we've still got a little time. By the way, I heard the boys at choir practice. Not bad, Father O'Malley. Not bad at no, all. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, and one other matter I almost forgot. Look. A $20 bill. $20, yes. That young lady dropped it by to see uh, uh, Carol James. Oh, a fine little lady. She said she got your message and was meaning to drop by all the week, but she's being busy at her new job. Oh, then she's working hard. That's fine. You know, I should drop over and see her. Well, I think she should. Still, still should go back to her home. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you're right, Father. Let me, let me see what I can find out. not to worry about me. Well, a lot of things can happen in two weeks' time. Now, uh, just a minute, Carol. I think your landlord and I had better have a little talk. Are you willing to take my word on something, Father? Two weeks ago, you told me we were going to throw her out. Oh, but when I said that, I hadn't met her. Well, here I was with a, a vacant apartment on my hands. It seemed a shame to throw her out, and, well, what's so wrong with that? Up to here, nothing. And that's as far as it's gone, Father. Okay, I'll take your word. And not that we haven't been seeing a lot of each other. And he's got me a job, Father. I'm singing with the band at the Oxford Club. And come next payday, he's going to get his rent every nickel. At the Oxford Club, eh? I have some friends, Father. In this case, they're music publishers. I used to work for them until Dad convinced me I could do better foreclosing mortgages. Well, this is all very interesting. A nice apartment, even a piano. Well, she needs one, doesn't she? A, a singer has to practice, doesn't she? Say, Carol tells me you can play, Father. Oh, I've always been interested in music. Used to write a bit of it a few years ago. That little band, too. I played for the school dances. O'Malley's Orioles. <laughs> then I found I had quite a decision to make. Whether to write the nation's songs or go my way. Any regrets, Father? Regrets? No. Now I get a big kick out of helping people realize that, well, that religion doesn't have to be this. It can be bright. It can be like this. Hey. <laughs> you said you used to write music. Did you ever have anything published? Well, no. no. I was just getting started, and then the war came along, and I suddenly realized that what I really wanted is what I'm doing now. Well, would you play one of your songs? No. No, no, but I'll tell you what I will. Stop by the church this afternoon. Me? Church? Mm -hmm. Downstairs in the basement. If you still think you want to hear one of my tunes, drop around about 4 o'clock. Oh. Thanks, Father. We'll be there. Bye. Right. You know who they are, Carol? Why, they're the worst bunch of hooligans in New York. And he's got them singing like angels. In that song. Ted, it's a wonderful song. Yeah. It's not bad at all. Huh. Father O'Malley. He's quite a fellow. Wonderful. Oh, that was beautiful, Father. Just beautiful. Can we hear something else? Would you like to hear something, something really nice? Yes, very much. All right, okay, boys. Let's try number six. Hey, pipe down. You hide the father. Pipe down, you mugs. <laughs> Carol, wait here. I've got an idea. 
I want to make a phone call. From a church, but it's no gag, Max. Now listen. I tell you, the song's great, so grab your hat and get right over here. St. Dominic's Church. It's right at the corner of... What do you think? Well, Father, that's a that's a pretty good song you got there. Thank you very much, Mr. And he's the guy who knows. Sharpest little publisher in town. <laughs> Father, I think we got a deal. Now, uh, what do you say to 750 bucks and 2% on all royalties? You're not serious. You'll give uh, me... Uh, uh, hold it, Max. The price is 1,005% royalties. I, uh, I thought I taught you the music business. <laughs> Come on, Max. It's all for the church. Okay, give me a pen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Will you do me a favor, Mr. Gold? No, I can't do it, Father. Not a cent more than no, I've no, already... No, 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 I don't, no. I don't mean that. But instead of a check, will you come to church next Sunday? Church? Mm-hmm. And bring the money in cash. There's, well, there's a friend of mine, and what I have in mind, it could make him very happy. Church. Okay, Father. Now, uh, you do me a favor. Just pray this song will be a hit. <laughs> Well, Father, I thought we had a fine turnout for 10 o'clock mass, didn't you? Oh, I, I have no complaint to make about that, Father Malik. It's me, the sermon. Devoting the entire sermon to pleading for money to save the church. I have no gift for such things. But your sermon was wonderful. Well, here it is. I've totaled up the offertory. Ah, you don't have to tell me something in the neighborhood, uh, neighborhood of 70 or 80 dollars. It's the same every Sunday, whether you uh, beg or not. Now, here. You just take a look. One thousand and ninety-three dollars. One thousand. Well, that's very gratifying. That that's very gratifying. Huh? And the bishop thought I couldn't preach. Thought I had a mouthful of clover. A <laughs> thousand and ninety-three dollars. I'm quite a salesman, Father O'Malley, and at my age. <laughs> for station identification. The curtain rises on Act Three of Going My Way, starring Barry Fitzgerald as Father Fitzgibbon and William Lundigan as Father O'Malley, with Stanley Clements as Tony. Well, unknown to Father Fitzgibbon, Father O'Malley's song has been published, and the royalties are starting to trickle in. And while there's a long way to go before St. Dominic's will be out of debt, Father O'Malley, he's dug out another song or two from his trunk, and he's been spending a lot of time working with the boys' choir. Today, however, he's anxious to take some time off. Oh, come to the point, Father O'Malley. Now, what is it you want, you and Father O'Dowd? Uh, well, with your permission, Father, Chuck wants to play a little golf with me. So, uh, do you suppose I can have a half a dollar? A far? A far? Well, I, I, I need a new golf ball. If I lose it, I'll, I'll swear off. I'll quit. All right, take 50 cents. Take it out to the ladies' sodality. They never keep any books. Uh, do you suppose I could buy one for Father O'Dowd, too? Oh, I can get two nice repaints for 50 cents, Father. I'll give him 50 cents. You know, you ought to come along with us. Sure, just go around for the walk. The fresh air will do you good. Sure. You can be our kibitzer. What's that? Our kibitzer. Sort of an over-the-shoulder quarterback. We'd love to have you, Father. Oh, no, believe me, this is the first time I ever had a caddy in my hand. Amazing! 
Well, I don't know what's the matter with me tonight, Father. I can't even beat you at checkers. <laughs> Five games in a row. Well, here I sleep tonight, and anyway. it must be that golf. You know, I feel ten years younger. Things are going better, aren't they, Father? Thank the good Lord they are. Well, you know, I've been thinking. Before something else goes wrong, why don't you take a vacation? And do what, for well, instance? That trip to Ireland to see your mother? My mother. Ah, if I only could. Well, the interest on the mortgage is all paid up to date, and I have plans that'll take care of the next payment, too. You really think it would be all right? I mean, it, would, it wouldn't... Oh, it's just giving the church. The church is on fire. It's on fire. <laughs> Nothing left. The church burned to the ground. Nothing but ruins and ashes. Don't you worry, Father. We'll build again. Besides, we still have the rectory and your, your garden here. The church is gone. Ah, oh, but the people aren't gone. And they still need you. Meanwhile, send your congregation over to my parish, Father. I'll even split the collection with you 50-50. <laughs> Take it, Father. Now, what makes you both so sure the church will ever be rebuilt? Oh. Excuse me, I, I'll go to bed. I don't feel well. Good morning. No, no, no. Not me medicine again. Come on now, Father. Sit up now. Swallow it down. Doctors and medicine. What I need is to be up and around. Being up and around is what got you down. Ever since the fire, traipsing all over the parish trying to raise funds. Now, how much did you collect yesterday? Oh, now, there's no need to rub it in. $39. Yeah, and the doctor bill came this morning. How much? $40. <gasps> no use, is it, Chuck? Oh, no, no. You're not going to lose hope, are you? Hope? Now, when you're young, it's easy to keep the fires of hope burning bright. But at my age, you're lucky if the pilot light doesn't go out. Well, did you make a parish call? Oh, yes, yes. And I saw Carol. They're getting married, Father. <laughs> Carol and Ted Haynes. <laughs> They know well, uh, She's doing very well with her singing. Just made a record of a new song. They, uh, they, uh, they expect it to do very well. It's something called uh, Going My Way. Well, that's the silliest name for a song I ever heard. <laughs> yes, isn't it? Anyway, she and Ted, they, uh, well, they talked to Ted's father about the mortgage. He's going to cut it in half. You don't say cut mm. the mortgage in half. Ah, bless the man. Bless that you. And I've got some more news. Tony and the boys, the choir, they're going on a little concert tour. Going on a what? No, no, I have their parents' consent and they'll be back in time for school. Yeah, but they're not... Besides, the... travel's a great education. And if they make any money, it's going to help build you a new church. <laughs> not much of a church, maybe, but something to go on. And, uh, oh, yeah, this is for you, this check. $3,500. Oh, yeah, but it, it's made out to you. Oh, well, that's, that's just a formality, Father. From the Max Dolan Music... Publishing. Well, uh, yes, Father. I did a little work for them, uh, uh, orchestration. Ah, yes, you only just me to know that. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, sir, the bishop told me you had a bit of a talent for music. But just before hundred dollars. How is the pilot light burning now, huh? Burning bright, I tell you. Yeah, it's a long road back, Father. We've started. You know, I have a feeling St. Dominic's may rise again. Sure, it'll rise again. And I think I'll get up myself. Not today, you won't. Tomorrow, then. Tomorrow. I feel better. Oh, I feel a great deal better. The, the medicine, no doubt. That, that, that was very nice, boys, very nice. Now, go on, go on home. Away with you now. Your dinner's ready. Go on, go on, go on. Scatter. Good night, boys. Goodbye. Well, Father, how do you like the new organ? I never heard anything sweet on me life. The singing of the boys and the new organ. And to think they raised the money all by themselves. Oh, the good boys, the good boys, Father. And I just checked with Constable McCarthy. Not a single missing token in all these three months. <laughs> Father... Father, I'd like to talk to you. Ah, it'll be a fine, happy Christmas. The temporary little church building ready for dedication. The boys singing out the Christmas father, hymns. And father, I, uh, I won't be here at Christmas. Huh? What's that? The bishop's transferring me. You're leaving me? But, me boy, what am I going to do without you? 
You didn't ask to leave. No, no. As a matter of fact, I asked to stay with him. But the bishop wants me to help him out, and I... Oh, I wish you could have heard some of the things the bishop said about you. He has all the confidence in the world in him. Now, don't you worry, either. He's sending you a new assistant. Well, now, I want to wish you all the success in the world, which I know you'll have. Is it a parish of your own? Well, no, not, not exactly, Father. You see, this is this church, St. Charles, it's... It's, well, the pastor is getting along in years, and things aren't... You mean, aren't... You mean they're in trouble? Yeah, yeah. And I'm supposed to try and help them. You mean without the orphan, I know. That's right, yeah. <laughs> well, no, that, that, that's a difficult assignment. But it'll work out. You may have trouble with the old man at first. He may be running off to see the bishop every few minutes, but uh, don't, don't, don't let that bother you. You bring him around to your way of thinking. Come on, we'll talk about it at uh-huh. supper. He will know how to manage the old fuss budget. Take him out on the golf course. Get him in the fresh air. Yeah, yeah. We'll get along just so he... So yes, he, yes uh... so he knows how to come in out of the rain. I know. <laughs> That's it, Father. That's it, exactly. Can I come in, Father? Come in, Colin. Hi, Father. So you're really leaving us, huh? And the night before Christmas. Yeah, I've got my orders, Tony. Just packing the things right now. Incidentally, I want you to take my place with the choir. From now on, you're in charge. Oh, thanks, Father. You've got no worries. One of them bums gets out of line and I'll... You'll, uh... What? I'll admonish him, Father. <laughs> Say, uh, when are you going to give Father Fitzsimmons his supply? Shh, that's so loud. Those boys haven't told anyone yet, have they? Oh, no, not a word, Father. And if they did, I'd kick their... I mean, I'd be very disappointed oh. in them. Well, don't worry about me, Father. I'll be everything you want me to be, just like you was here checking up on me. And if you don't, I'm going to drop you like you was a hot potato. That's a deal, Father. (laughs) Good luck to you, Father. Go along, Tony. Oh, come in, Joe. Come in. I uh, just wanted to say goodbye, Father. You're not leaving this minute. No, no, but you've so much to do on Christmas Eve. I I just thought I'd... Joe... I'm sure that the way to say what I'd like to say will occur to me after you're gone. We're separated by many years, which could be the reason why we haven't seen eye to eye in many instances. But though we've had many differences, we never differed in fundamentals. It was only in methods. But never in our hearts. And it occurs to me now that there should be just enough left in me bottle for for drinking to your good health. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, may I come in? Hello, Tim. Well, I just left the bishop, Father Fitzgibbon. He told me to report to you. I'm taking Father O'Malley's place here. What? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. The bishop wouldn't do a thing like that on me. <laughs> you and your little joke. And we're going to have a new church to work in, Father. And I don't mean that temporary one out there either. Yes, but we haven't raised enough money. Well, I've just been over to see Ted Haynes and his old man, uh, uh, his father. <laughs> he tore up the old mortgage. How do you like that, huh? Now, you're joking again. Oh, no, I'm not. He's going to give us a brand new mortgage to take care of everything we need. <laughs> After all, Father, what would St. Dominic's be without a mortgage? <laughs> uh, Mr. Haynes is waiting to see you, Father. Well, this is the finest Christmas since... Well, well it's a fine Christmas. Uh, excuse me, I'd better see the good man. Well, Tim, is she here? Come on, she's with Carol and Ted. She's waiting for you to bring her in. Mrs. Fitzgibbon, this is Father O'Malley who sent all the way to Ireland for you. Oh, I've heard so much about you, Mrs. Fitzgibbon. It's good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, you just come along. And so, me dear people, with all the good news, we have a bit of sad news, too. Father O'Malley is leaving us. Yes, and I, I think you'll agree with me that we're all a little better for having known him. He was always thinking of others, and that, you know, can make life very beautiful. Believe me, it's what we do for others that, that makes all the... It, 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 uh, no, Tony, Tony, no, no music yet. Father, come here. Look who's come to see you. My girl. Mother. Mother. Father O'Malley, where is he? 
He's not gone. Yes, Michael. He said to tell you Merry Christmas. Our stars will return. Now, here's Mr. Kerry Wilson with our stars. And here they are, those two fine sons of Ireland, Barry Fitzgerald and William Lundigan. Now, what's your play for next week, Kerry? Next week, another delightful comedy. The very warm and human story of a man who pretends to be his own valet, only to discover that he must marry a charming widow with whom his valet has been corresponding. It's holy matrimony. And as our stars of this highly humorous romance from 20th Century Fox, we have Academy Award winner Charles Lawton, co-starring with one of the great ladies of the theater, also an Academy Award winner, Faye Banker. I won't miss it. It was a pleasure to work with you, Kerry, and good night now. And I enjoyed it, too. And I hope Irving Cummings was listening in. Good night. I know he was, and we all wish him a speedy recovery. Good night, and the top of the evening. Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra directed by Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to be with us again next week for another worldwide presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Brought to you through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>